Good afternoon. Um, the first candidate I want to introduce is uh, 44 years old. He started volunteering for the PT after G2011. I uh, became a member shortly after that. And uh, he helped out at KD and uh, KD as a Kathy Bukit. Uh, it takes me quick pleasure to introduce uh, Terence Tan Lee Chen. My name is Terence Tan. My name is Terence Tan. My Chinese name is Chinese. I've been volunteering with uh, my home with Kapitol Manam's Community uh, People Sessions in Kapitol K, and also for various classrooms and activities that I've done it since May 2011. I've also been walking with Li Zhen Zhang in Zhuqie and its surrounding areas uh, since about 2013. It has been a satisfying and enriching experience to be involved with the community's efforts on the ground. I witnessed the WP's genuine commitment to serve Singaporeans and to better Singaporeans' lives. I've seen all of WP's leadership efforts roll up their short sleeves and work together with volunteers to benefit Singaporeans and residents living in WP managed areas. It was whilst volunteering with the WP that I witnessed two stubborn leadership. I then decided to become a WP member six months ago. I'm humbled by the WP state meeting me on the state for the Mr. Tamanish Mugaratan had previously said on a strong opposition to be good for Singapore. I believe that there is much utility in and a strong desire by Singaporeans for a rational, reasonable, and responsible check and balance in Parliament. An opposition that is loyal to the interests of Singapore and Singaporeans. An opposition that does not vote purely for opposing, an opposition that channels the valid and legitimate concerns of hard working Singaporeans after the government, an opposition that attempts to facilitate an ongoing and genuine Singapore conversation with the ruling party, an opposition that is focused on constructively and rationally debating policies that affect all of our lives and the future of Singaporeans. Government policies should be evaluated so that they benefit Singaporeans over the medium and long term. They should not just benefit ultimate GDP, where many Singaporeans are left behind, struggling and unable to make ends meet. I really do believe that the government has focused a little bit too much on short term economic gain without sufficient regard to the long-term implications that affect all of us. As Mr. Lee Sien-Long has said recently, we have maxed out on the easy solutions. I want to see a bright future for St. Paul's children where they are nurtured and encouraged to take on challenges optimistically, live in a dynamic, inclusive, and cohesive society, are not seen merely as economic digits, and are really encouraged to think innovatively out of the box. Let's hope that Singapore progresses accordingly in the next 50 years. We believe that rational and sensible opposition voices in Parliament will not detract but complement the government's efforts. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm a litigation lawyer uh, with Peter Law LLC. I qualified as a barrister in 1995 and an advocate and solicitor in 1997. I sit on various law society committees. 
Uh, I'm appointed as an assistant counsel for NASCO, which is the legal assistance scheme for capital offenses. Uh, I'm also counsel for CLASS, which is the criminal legal aid scheme. I help out occasionally at Hopkins Community Legal Clinic and assist in the WPA's community fund as a secretary. I've not spent my entire working career as a lawyer. I've done a few other things. I've had the privilege of living and working and being answers in some of our surrounding uh, countries. Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. I've been a managing director for Hotel Group. Uh, I've managed uh, various hotels. I've been responsible for the investments and development portfolio for a listed Malaysian company. And I've also been involved in real estate uh, funds um, investments in Thailand in a business development role. Uh, I've also been an entrepreneur. I've opened a few uh, restaurants and bars. I want to see a government that is focused on providing a nurturing and balanced environment for hardworking Singaporeans to thrive, to find fulfillment, and to make babies. The PAP have said that they are their own check and that an elected opposition is not necessary. You can give the PAP a black check in G2015, or you can support the WP to empower your future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terence. Uh, and uh, in case you haven't gotten every detail uh, of Terence's background, uh, as you mentioned yesterday, not to worry, we will be uploading the profiles for your use, so um, you know, they don't panic. Okay, the next candidate uh, we'd like to introduce uh, is Cheryl Denise Lowe Siu Wen. Now, she's a sales consultant uh, in a global services firm, 31 years old, single. And uh, 12 years ago, she was actually my student by the Polytechnic. So uh, that just tells you a little bit about how old I am. You know, uh, Cheryl um, has been uh, volunteering in our junior GRC grassroots for some months now, uh, helping out in the meet people session as well as uh, some ground activities. And um, she decided to join WP because uh, she felt that she could contribute more by being a member. So I will hand you over to her to explain uh, her motivations. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lin. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. I'm Cheryl Do, and I'm 31 years old. I'm currently a consultant with the document management company. Um, I'm here today because I'm very proud to be a Singaporean, and I'm passionate to contributing to our nation so that each and every one of us who call Singapore our home. I grew up from a very humble background and in fact, a slightly disadvantaged background. I was raised up mostly by relatives. I only made it through my secondary and polytechnic school days, through part-time work, and through the generous support of my wonderful relatives and secondary school teachers. Eventually, I was um, my Bachelor of Business degree in Economics and Finance from, from the SIM RMIT University. Through the same method, which I believe sounds very familiar to a lot of Singaporeans, um, which is having a full-time job during the day and taking our degrees part-time after work. Education to me is the most basic and foremost importance for young Singaporeans as it forms a solid foundation ready in time to come for adulthood. The young are the future of Singapore and I feel no young Singaporeans should have to go through so much difficulties simply because of their lacking family background. More assistance can be provided so as to ensure no young Singaporean has been deprived of an education simply because of financial difficulties. Next, despite my adversities, my late grandmother was the source of my strength. She taught me compassion and gratitude. Thus, ever since I was a child, I've always had had the softest spot for the elderly. I respect and care for them very much. They have contributed a lot to shaping Singapore into what it is today, and hence I believe more to be done to thank and to support them in their golden years. And I know one thing for sure, if my grandmother is alive today, she will be my biggest supporter to what I'm standing up for today. Lastly, I joined the Workers' Party as my beliefs are very much aligned to the Workers' Party's objectives. The Workers' Party has been around for more than five decades. And this speaks volume of its political credibility. We are certainly here to stay. It is also a rational and responsible opposition party, as we are here for our purpose, which is to better the lives of Singaporeans. 
And with the experiences I've gone through growing up, I can fully connect to the woes of the masses and relate to the everyday Singaporean issues as well. Together, the Workers' Party and myself, we are here to provide a voice for fellow Singaporeans in and out of Parliament and, have, and to allow a choice for each Singaporean to empower the future as we progress together as a nation. Thank you. And um, I'd like to continue in, in Malay language as well. Selamat tengah hari. Nama saya Cheryl Lo dan saya berusia 32 tahun. Saya seorang berbanding di sebuah syarikat pengurusan doktor. Saya menyertai kepada pekerja kerana maklamat yang amat sejajah dengan prinsip hidup saya. Pati pekerja yang telah wujud selama lebih dari lima dekad adalah sebuah pati pembangkan yang rasional dan bertanggungjawab. Kerana tujuan utama kami adalah untuk memperbaiki kehidupan warga Singapura. Berdasarkan pengalaman peribadi saya semasa zaman muda saya, saya amat berhati mengenai isu-isu seharian yang dialami oleh setiap warga Singapura. Oleh itu, saya yakin saya dan rakan-rakan seperjuangan saya di dalam pandai pekerja boleh menjadi suara rakyat di dalam dan di luar parlimen. Saya yakin kami dapat memberi setiap warga Singapura sebuah pilihan yang akan memperkasakan masa depan mereka. Terima kasih. Thank you, Cheryl. The next candidate I want to introduce is uh, Firuz Khan. He's uh, 48 years old. He's not new, he joined the uh, Workers' Party in uh, 2006. He actually offered in our Gang SMC in the early years. And uh, currently he's helping out at uh, the regular actually at the NPS at the Fireleva Division in the uh, uh, GRC. Thank you, Pung. My name is Firuz. I was born in Jalan Al Saka and partly raised in a company environment before we being resettled to Hekut in 1977, uh, in which it's a part of Kelang Surat. I joined the Workers' Party in 2006 as I saw it um, an avenue to make a difference to the local community. I had always wanted to help my countrymen and to make my country proud where I can. The first time I had a chance to do this was at national level in 1984 when I was selected to represent Singapore in the youth soccer tournament. Uh, it was held in Japan. Being able to wear our national colors and play for Singapore made me feel very happy and proud. The least I could do is to contribute um, to my country in whatever ways I could. My journey in politics started profoundly after returning to Singapore in 1996 for my studies in the UK. Um, Singapore seems to have changed upon my return from the UK and the cost of living has really increased. In 1999, um, I was asked by a friend to manage the Tapis Children's Home. I took a pay cut from my banking career to take up the challenge because I wanted to understand the social issues engulfing our community. It was also my way to contribute to Singapore and especially to my own community, the Malay Muslim. I was exposed to many cases of uh, abuse, vulnerable children, family violence and poverty. I remember one day, Saturday morning, that um, a couple of children were sitting on their own. Normally, Saturday and Sunday being a family visit day, they would look forward to see their parents or stay with them during their home leave, but not for the two. I went and asked their social worker what time um, they were expecting their parents. The social worker whispered that the parents did not have the means to come. Quickly, I informed the social worker that, um, to arrange for a taxi. 
shortly when the parents arrived and the family was reunited. I could see the smile all over them and it touches my heart. I helped the whole by shaping their policies, introduction of various programs relating to health and well-being of children and young persons. The program and activities which were planned for the children and young people develop their confidence and make them feel better about themselves. This really compelled me to want to change things. It has led me to believe that I could do more by helping others outside of the home as well. And I started to look for other ways to continue this journey. In 2006, when I joined Workers' Party and helped them till I moved to UK in 2007, because of, um, sorry, because of my son's education. It was there that I started a chocolate business because of my experience in Singapore as a general manager of Roy's Chocolate. I'm still managing the chocolate business out of Singapore. I returned to Singapore in 2010 and then we started helping out with various WP activities such as Meet the People Session at Aljunit GRC and so on. The party for giving me this opportunity to do more. Do support us in our quest to provide a better Singapore for you. Please allow me to speak in Malay language. Saya dilahirkan di Jalan Al-Sagaf yang dibesarkan sebahagiannya dalam suasana kampung sebelum keluarga kami dipindahkan ke Hegrod pada tahun 1977. Pelibatan saya bersama Parti Pekerja bermula pada tahun 2006 atas keinginan untuk membela nasib masyarakat setempat agar terus maju dari segenap aspek kehidupan di negara ini. Saya amat gemar melakukan sesuatu yang dapat menaikkan nama baik Singapura. Kali pertama saya dapat berbuat demikian adalah apabila saya dipilih mewakili negara dalam sukan bola sepak peringatan peringkat remaja dalam tahun 1984 di negara Jepun. Pada tahun 1999, seorang teman menyusul agar saya dapat menguruskan rumah tumpangan kanak-kanak tertapis. Saya telah didedahkan kepada banyak kes kanak-kanak didera dengan persekitaran negatif, kes keganasan, keluarga dan kemiskinan. Saya aktif dengan parti pekerja pada tahun 2006 sehingga saya berhijrah ke United Kingdom pada tahun 2007 oleh kerana anak saya ingin melanjutkan pelajaran beliau di situ. Di UK saya mulakan perniagaan coklat atas pengalaman saya sebagai pengurus besar syarikat Royce. Saya pulang ke tanah air pada tahun 2010 dan aktif kembali dengan parti pekerja. Saya amat gembira dapat kembali dengan kerja-kerja kebajikan menjadi satu kegairahan saya semenjak dulu lagi. Saya amat menghargai kesempatan yang diberi oleh parti pekerja untuk meneruskan kerja-kerja kebajikan yang telah mendarah daging diri saya selama ini. Thank you, Pyrrhus. And the final candidate, or potential candidate that we wish to introduce to you today is Yuko Tiong Yi. He has a finance background and is a managing partner of a private investment business. He's 41 years old, married with two children, and uh, he's been helping out in the people sessions and also some grassroots activities. Uh, of uh, MP Lao Kiang as well as uh, MP Faisal Mahana. So I hand over to you. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Hello, fellow Singaporeans. Thank you for your time today. My name is Luke Ko. I studied finance in NTU and I am managing partner of a private investment business. <coughs> Why vote? for the Workers' Party. David Marshall dedicated his life to freeing Singapore from British rule. He became Singapore's first minister. 
David Marshall founded the Workers' Party more than 50 years ago. He loved Singapore. I too love Singapore. The Workers' Party voted against the 6.9 million population policy in Parliament. It is a big mistake, like the two-child policy. Many of our brothers and sisters are missing today because they were aborted 30 or 40 years ago. Our mothers cried, but nobody listened. The graduate mother policy added insult to injury. Many families could not afford university. Today, Singapore has an aging crisis. Singapore's aging crisis will become worse with the 6.9 million population policy because it over relies on foreigners who are older. <coughs> Singapore needs more Workers' Party members of parliament to prevent a bigger crisis in the next 20 or 30 years. Please look up for the Workers' Party manifesto at wp.sg and attend our rallies which will address policies that matter to you. I hope to serve you and Singaporeans in parliament the concerns and aspirations of Singaporeans should be heard in Parliament. Policies have to be scrutinised for the benefit of Singaporeans and better solutions put forward. Empower your future. Vote Workers' Party. Okay, thank you, Luke. All right, now we can open to the floor for any questions that uh, you may have. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, talk about the theme that you raised yesterday, you know, empower the future, right? Mm -hmm. That's the theme. I thought we finished discussing it. Uh, but just want to ask this point, because uh, uh, yesterday WP said that the external environment and shape is the environment and shape, so uh, that's why you are uh, looking at this region of the entrenched opposition that you have a better view with the change the environment as the way that you have to do for Singapore. But it's interesting because the PAP the has also been talking about change environment in Singapore and, and external environment changes also recently. And their solution is that they feel that a strong political leadership is needed. And that's, that's their call to the voters. So um, if I may ask, can you elaborate more on your vision and how does that present the kind of what you want to do with Mr. Bayon? Okay, maybe I'll just touch uh, briefly on your question. Um, Okay, fundamentally, I think at the core of uh, the theme and power of your future, uh, really it's back to the vote. I think we did touch on it yesterday. And uh, I don't think this is something new. We have always seen the vote as uh, something which the Singaporean citizens have in terms of bargaining power with the government. And um, through, through the exercise of the vote, the uh, people can express their views on uh, whether they are happy or not with the government policies and, and thereby become empowered because we would expect that the government would respond to the results of any general election. Uh, um, the second point of course is that uh, because of the more complex environment, if you like, the changing circumstances, uh, obviously even the government admits that they don't have the answers to everything. And therefore uh, the question will be uh, whether Singaporeans will be better served by a ruling party that's very powerful or another model. So I think that's something we want to put to the voters. Can we have some questions for the candidates? Um, Cheryl, excuse me. Um, you spoke in Malay just now. Is that your native language? Or is that your native language? Sorry, where are you from, please? I'm from TOC. TOC, your name? Pidio. Pidio. Hi, uh, yes, um, I grew up in a Pradhan family, so that explains my ability to speak in Malay. Uh, my grandmother could only speak Malay and, and dialect, uh, so that's how I learned my, my Malay language. Um, I will be uh, 
um, bringing up issues uh, generally regarding uh, income inequality, healthcare, housing, uh, education. So it's, it's general issues which are affecting the locals in the world. I think uh, through my experience uh, working at the MPS, that's where we pick uh, you know, issues and uh, then we go according to case-by-case -case basis. So you know, there's no specific answer to this one. Uh, we see it when it comes. I came to tell you later, uh, you mentioned some more policies that are not worth the same for, and you mentioned something about the 6 to 9 million policy data that I'm looking. So, what are some of the other policies that you yourself will be bringing to the ground and to parliamentary issues in terms of the residents' issues? Thank you for your question. Um, I mean, uh, uh, this is the reason why I, do, I did a little bit of advertisement just now. Uh, the Workers' Party manifesto is going to come out in full very soon. Uh, so it will detail the party's uh, position and um, ideas and solutions. Um, but just to give you some idea, um, I spoke about the 6.9 million population policy. And I think it's important to look at it in context because the problem, the aging crisis that we face today um, that did not happen in a vacuum. It happened because of very misguided policies many decades ago. So I think it's important for Singapore to have people um, go to parliament and debate issues because if you don't, there can be a lot of groupthink if there's only one party. And we are facing the consequences of that kind of good thing, you know, many decades uh, down the road. So I don't agree with you that there's a contribution in any way. Um, okay, first of all, um, as we mentioned earlier, we, we do see the vote as, as instrumental in the people uh, being empowered to determine direction. So in that sense, uh, we believe very strongly that, uh, and we have seen also that the government does react to the uh, outcome of elections. They do monitor percentages very closely and they do do uh, introspection uh, after elections which turn results which they find not too favorable to themselves. So that's one way in which the people are empowered to negotiate with the government. At the same time also uh, uh, that we do see that uh, in many spheres of Singapore life, be they uh, in sports groups, uh, professional or business groups and so on, uh, there are government representatives there when we don't think that they are necessary to be there at all. Uh, we have sufficient talent in the private sector among our own sports people who care about these causes uh, in the arts or whatever, who can inspire that these movements uh, without any government representatives at their helm. So th this is the direction in which we think Singapore should move uh, because we think there's sufficient talent uh, residing in the Singapore population to take us forward uh, to the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you think that makes you very happy in the world? Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose uh, there are a few things. Thanks, thanks Nicholas, for the question. Um, I don't think I had a plan. You know, uh, when I was 27, I, I didn't think that two years later I would be uh, going out into business or living in Indonesia or, or, or in Bangkok. Uh, what I'd like to think is that I bring a little bit of commercial acumen uh, in addition to, to a legal skills uh, 
uh, the experience I've had uh, representing uh, um, various individuals uh, uh, in court. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to think that it's made me slightly more uh, uh, well known. Uh, Nature uh, I, I think it's not quite a fair uh, thing to ask. Uh, if you ask it of me also, I will not be able to respond to you. So if you, if you don't mind, uh, we can let them uh, explain in the language that they prefer for the time being. So the question is, uh, what do you think you can bring uh, to, the, to the electorate if you are elected? Yes. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, okay, um, I can understand you know, your preference for us answering in Mandarin. Um, I actually started, I studied Mandarin as a first language. You know, but I, I come from an English speaking family. I've hardly used it for the past 20 years. But I regularly communicate in the language um, with, with residents, um, with some of my friends. Uh, uh, let me Please allow me to respond in English. Um, one of the, the issue that I mentioned was population. And I will just give uh, some, a little bit of insight into um, our manifesto. It, it won't be, it won't be long. I, won't, I won't reveal too much because uh, my colleagues who have worked on it will elaborate on it. But essentially, this antidote our aging crisis is this. We have an aging crisis because of misguided population policies many decades ago. Um, the 6.9 billion population policy is only going to make it worse. So the PAT has a track record that is, you know, that, that, that really worries me. I think the focus should be investing in our own people, investing in our own children. And my personal feeling is that primary school education, I mean compulsory primary school education should be extended to kindergarten and even earlier. And the reasons are threefold. When we invest in our children, that's number one. Number two, they will provide truly equal opportunity for every child. And number three, it will enable others to have fulfilling professional and family lives. I think this, that solution specifically solves many of our problems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Next big question. Um, if I am elected, I bring with me um, my honesty, my integrity, and a genuine heart to serve the people of Singapore. I'm passionate about doing that and I will be willing to dedicate my life to do that, to doing public service. I would definitely also um, come up with events so that the um, community will get together, I can talk to them and understand the issues that they're facing and the challenges and how we go about to solve them. Okay, thank you. I think Terence and Firoz have already kind of answered that question. So if we can move on to the last two questions. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. this question. Uh, Norman, I have this question for Mr. Firoz. I mean, you mentioned about vulnerable children, which you have been doing your skin with the people in the United what, what more do you think the United States will talk about the history policies so about vulnerable children from the vulnerable families? I think um, what we have at the moment uh, is like one uh, shoes fits all. So I think you probably need to have a very specific cases where you can have a uh, home that target certain cases. Because at the moment we have all cases under one roof. So it's, it's a kind of difficult you know, for you to uh, go through your treatment program and things like that. But to my experience, I think the best is um, institution is the last resort. Okay, final question, perhaps. Yeah. 
savings ex Japan uh, at one stage in time um, you know things were things were going things were going really well and there was that spirit of optimism uh, I have to say that in my time away in the last 10 years if I take that earlier snapshot before I left Singapore and I come back and um, it's not the same Singaporeans are less optimistic they can't make minimum sum which is now 161,000 a lot of them can't uh, and we need to we need to really have reasoned debate in Parliament, so that perhaps the government uh, can reconsider their policies and really calibrate them and put Singaporeans at the fo focus and the forefront. And I think together with the Workers' Party, we are very rooted to the ground. I, I think that that's our strength. We understand and empathise and want to, to to continue to ask questions in Parliament and remind the government. Please put Singaporeans at the forefront of their policies. Okay, as, as for me, um, I think it's it's like running my family. Um, you have the passion to help people. So wherever I travel, uh, regardless, I, I always do that. You know, uh, even in UK, when I see uh, a Singaporean, I always ask them and I connect them. So I never have been like uh, disconnected in, in any ways. Um, I come back, even though I was based in the UK, um, I come back very often to Singapore. And each time when I'm here, I, I always lend my hand uh, in various uh, party activities, uh, meet people session, uh, outreach program. So um, I'm, I'm quite, um, you know, in fact, very in touch with, with the local ground. And like now in, in Aljunit, a lot of people recognize me. And then when I walk past there, they always come and greet us and you know invite us to have coffee with them. So um, I have, uh, I mean seriously, you know, I'm well connected with them. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming. I know some of you may have some more questions, so uh, the potential candidates will remain after the session. You can ask them uh, privately if you want to.